Carbonite availability enables you to maintain a perfectly synchronized copy of any server or application that you can immediately fail over to in the event of an interruption on the source. Here's how that works. Working in the Carbonite Replication Engine console, start by adding the source and target servers. You can add them by hostname or IP address. Enter the administrative credentials to add the source server. Then add the target server. There are two options for installing the Replication Engine. The first is to push the agent out to the source and the target through the console. To do that, highlight the server and select Install. Then choose your license key from the license inventory. The configuration wizard lets you specify where you want the agent installed and how much RAM and disk space to allocate to the queue. This determines how much RAM will be used before it starts spilling over to disk. The second option for installing the agent on either the source or the target is to do it locally. First, download the agent and run the installation file. Next, choose which product you're using. Then, choose which components to install on the server. Note that the target side installation does not require a license. As with the push install, the installation wizard creates a couple of local groups, one for being able to administer the solution and one for monitoring it. With the agent installed on both the source and target servers, you can now begin replicating. To create a protection job, highlight the source server in the console and select Protect. Since this is a SQL server, you can choose just SQL provided it's already installed on the target server. Or you can choose to protect the entire server. Next, determine if there are any files, folders, or volumes you wish to exclude from the job. This helps you minimize replication traffic. Since SQL has not yet been installed on the target, choose Full Server Protection to include it as part of the protection job. Next, there are several configuration options that allow you to control the behavior of both the replication engine and failing over to the target. The failover monitor allows you to set parameters for when a failover threshold has been reached. The console also gives you the option to perform a test failover on an alternative target without affecting the replication job. Under failover options, you can choose to trigger failover manually or automate it so it happens once the failover threshold has been met. Under failover identity, you can have the target assume the IP address of the source or retain the target network configuration and trigger a DNS update. This is useful for working across different subnets. Mirror, Verify, and Orphan Files determines how the software inspects data on the target and determines differences. Snapshots enable you to recover from a specific point in time rather than the most recent replica. Compression lets you adjust the size of the replication data that you're transmitting over the network. You can also limit the amount of bandwidth utilized by the replication job to adjust quality of service. Scripts allow you to trigger actions outside the job itself. Once you're finished configuring the job, click Next to be taken to the pre-flight checklist. If everything looks okay, click Finish. You'll be taken to a job overview showing all the replication jobs you've created in the console. The replication engine has now initiated the baseline synchronization. Select the job to view status as the target server begins to mirror the source. Back at the source, you can add data, such as a new file, while the baseline synchronization is taking place. There's no need to quiesce data on the source side before or after the baseline synchronization. Users can continue to use the source as they normally would. You can add a database on the source side, for instance. On the target side, you can see the system state folders and files that were added during the installation step, as well as the database files that were added at the source. Once the source finishes synchronizing, it is in a protected state and the mirror status is shown as idle. You can still continue to change data and add files. The software continues to replicate changes even after the baseline synchronization is complete. At this point, you can stop the source from running to simulate an interruption. When an interruption is detected on the source, it triggers an error message in the console. You have a few options, including initiating a manual failover to live data, performing a test failover, or failing over to a snapshot. You can also wait for the failover threshold to be reached. Once the failover threshold has been met, you'll receive an alert. If you've configured automatic failover, it will begin immediately. Again, you have a few failover options available depending on the way you've configured the solution. Choose the one that you want to initiate failover. During failover, the target assumes the identity of the source and traffic is routed to the new machine. You can connect to the server and see the files that were added during and after the baseline synchronization. A quick glance at the properties of the target server shows the source name and source domain membership. 
and all the SQL application services are present on the target. You can now log into SQL and see the application data is present. After cutover, you can delete the job if reverse protection is not enabled. Alternatively, you can trigger reverse protection once the original source server is fixed. That's all it takes to enable full server protection with Carbonite availability. Thanks for watching.